Welcome to Zcast, everybody. I'm Zias Caraval from ZK Research, and I'm back for another one of my thought leadership videos. Uh, before we get started, though, a quick shout out to eWeek, my media partner. All Zcasts are done, of course, in conjunction with the eWeek eSpeaks series. Uh, today, I'm delighted to have Shazad Merchant, CTO at Gigamon. Uh, Shazad, you and I have known each other for a long time, and I consider you one of the industry's smartest guys. So uh, do a quick intro on yourself and uh, just say hi to everybody and tell us a little bit of what you do. Yeah, yeah, thanks, yes, and thanks for those kind words. Uh, it, uh, indeed, we've known each other for a while and I've enjoyed our conversations. I think you run a fantastic program here, so looking forward to today's dialogue. Yeah, good. We're going to be talking about a topic called observability, and I use that in air quotes because it has become one of those big over overused buzzwords. Everybody's an observability vendor today. What does observability mean to you? Yeah, so there's, there's two or three things to think about over here when we talk about observability, but you're spot on. It is, it is a buzzword. It's, it's becoming uh, heavily used. Uh, so the first thing to understand about observability is that it is really all about understanding the behavior, performance, and other aspects of cloud infrastructure and cloud applications, but really from the inside out. In other words, you, you, you use things like distributed tracing by instrumenting the application to identify application behaviors, flows, bottlenecks. You use metrics you obtain from within the infrastructure, like CPU, memory, IO to baseline and track resource usage and performance and other uh, KPIs. So you're effectively acquiring telemetry from within what you're trying to monitor. So that's the first thing around observability. Uh, the second one is that the personas who are dealing with observability are a little different, right? It's, it's really DevOps and cloud ops. And, and this persona is used to scripting, automation, programming, and dealing with very large data sets, very large infrastructure. And consequently, observability is something that is catered to that need. In other words, how can I query the data to extract meaningful intelligence uh, that, that I require? And the last thing about observability is that traditionally it's been associated with infrastructure monitoring, application performance monitoring, but it has not traditionally been used for security. And this is an important distinction, right? Which is that uh, people think that, yes, you can absolutely apply observability to security, but there are some challenges that we'll hopefully talk about today as well. Yeah, so hold that thought. Um, I do know that there's this drive towards obs observability has been uh, you know, pushed by just being able to see more. I know this, you and I have talked for a long time about you can't manage and can't secure what you can't see. So obviously in this world of cloud where we have a lot of blind spots, we need to see more. Now I know um, Gigamon talks about the term deep observability. Uh, can you uh, just drill down to that? What, what exactly does that mean and how does it differ from what other people might think of as observability? Yeah, no, that, that's a great question. Um, you know, as we talked about, right, when, when we talk about observability in general, uh, it's, it's really looking at things inside out. Uh, but I think we are, we're quickly getting to a point where you need to go beyond that. And this is what we talk about deep observability as. It's really going beyond the current framework of, uh, for a couple of key reasons and a couple of key dimensions. The first is you certainly need the inside out perspective, but there are gaps in that perspective. And, and in order to complement that and in order to fill the picture over there, you also need the outside in perspective, which observability today doesn't really address, right? And so that's the first part of it is, is we are bringing that perspective, which is the outside in, looking at network telemetry, looking at network intelligence, which is an outside in perspective to fill in the gaps that observability has today. Uh, and the second thing is uh, we, we think that this whole approach around observability, around querying, dealing with large, large data sets is actually very well suited to security. But as I mentioned, there are gaps. And using this outside-in approach, using network intelligence and going deep into that kind of analysis can actually help take this uh, perspective of observability and, and apply it towards security in a very successful way as well. And so this is what we are really looking at, right, which is going beyond the traditional aspects of observability, going beyond things like metrics, event logs, traces, looking at network intelligence, bringing the outside in perspective and being able to apply that towards security as well. So Shazad, let's uh, stay on the topic of security. I know you just mentioned that uh, observability alone isn't sufficient for security. So, uh, you know, I know a lot of observability vendors that are now trying to position themselves as security vendors and they can't always, you know, do what they need to do to help protect the company. So what's, what is observability missing that makes it insufficient for security? Yeah, so that, this, is, this is really the all-important question in my view. Um, and, you know, as we talked about, uh, when, when we talk about observability, traditionally we've, we've leveraged, you know, uh, telemetry data that you obtain from distributed tracing, from event logs, metrics, and so on. Now, you know, one of the things that bad actors typically do, uh, you know, when, when they establish, you know, persistence on a particular end system, one of the first thing they do is they turn off telemetry, right? They will try to turn off logs. 
uh, and, and they won't do it permanently. They just do it for the short period of time when they're, for example, trying to escalate privileges or they're trying to enumerate, uh, you know, your drives or they're trying to move laterally and then they turn it back on again. And so this creates gaps in your observability data and it creates gaps at precisely those places where you need that information, right? And that's because, again, observability is dealing with things from the inside out perspective and, and, and that's the challenge, right? Uh, and so when we sit and think a little bit about this from a security perspective, what you need is a reliable um, and uh, a relevant and a real-time source of telemetry that is highly immutable, right? In other words, it can be turned off, it can be changed uh, by the bad actor simply because they have a presence on the end systems. And this is where network intelligence actually plays a pretty significant role. We, we've been using network intelligence in the traditional world for, for decades now, right? And, and uh, it, it, there's a reason why network-based solutions for security have uh, gained so much prominence over the last two decades. It's time to bring that into the world of observability, going beyond MELT, which is metrics, events, logs, and traces, and, and going deep into observability and looking at uh, network intelligence uh, so that you can actually start applying those principles towards security as well. Yeah, yeah, it's good to see because, you know, log files and stuff are good. Even if they can't be turned off, we're good, they're good for things that happen on the system, but it's really hard to tie together what happens between two systems, just log files. And it's been something companies have struggled with for years. So the other, one of the things you mentioned being a driver for observability was the shift to cloud. Uh, and then, of course, we're in this multi-cloud or distributed cloud world. How does that change IT requirements and how does observability fit into that? Yeah, this is this is also an important topic, right? Because you know every every customer we talk to has a, a hybrid cloud story or a multi cloud story, right? Uh, you know, hybrid meaning uh, you know private and public, as well as across uh, multiple clouds as well. So, so there are two things that come into play over here. Uh, the first is you need consistency across all of these different environments, right? From your private cloud infrastructure, whether you're running a large VMware deployment, you know, in an on-prem data center or maybe in, in a colo or you're moving into, into AWS, into Azure, into GCP, you need consistency across all of these in terms of how you approach observability, how you approach uh, telemetry, how you approach troubleshooting, and how you approach security. You can't, people can't train their people differently for different environments because we already have a shortage of personnel, right? So you want to make sure that you have consistency in your compliance uh, posture, in your risk posture across all of these different environments. So that's the first uh, challenge we're seeing uh, with, with the hybrid and multi-cloud environment. And the second one we're seeing is that in the public cloud, uh, the role of DevOps has gained significant prominence out there today. And there's a reason for it. DevOps has done a fantastic job, an absolutely uh, kick-ass job in terms of being able to manage extremely large infrastructure with, with limited resources because they leverage things like automation, scripting, they're comfortable with programming to be able to scale things out pretty significantly. What we need to do is we need to take some of those learnings from DevOps and bring that into the world of security so that you can apply uh, the frameworks of security consistently across the hybrid cloud infrastructure. And that is really, really important, right? Is you can't have something different over here, something different over there, uh, because vulnerabilities transcend boundaries and bad actors take advantage of those discrepancies. Yeah, well, uh, security is a history of being something different here and something different there. Uh, which is why sometimes when you have too many vendors, it doesn't work very well, right? So, although yep. you guys act as a normalizing factor in a lot of ways, but that's another discussion. Um, uh, you know, you are the CTO of Gigamon, so let's talk a little bit about Gigamon. What 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 does your company offer in the area of deep observability? Yeah, so our our whole job over, uh, and goal over here is to is to provide a no excuses solution uh, towards deep observability. In other words, augment. Uh, observability to fill in all the gaps that observability has today, both for infrastructure and performance monitoring, but also for security, but in a completely no excuses way. In other words, it, it shouldn't matter where your workloads reside, whether they are on-prem in a physical bare metal infrastructure, whether they are in a private cloud infrastructure, virtual machines, they're in the public cloud, they're in containers, uh, microservices, service meshes, it shouldn't matter. We'll provide the ways to acquire the telemetry data and we provide one consistent way to be able to take that data, to be able to sort through it, extract what is relevant, and then feed it to all the tools that do the analysis, whether it's for security, for application performance, or infrastructure monitoring, right? So one way to be able to augment all of your observability needs and fill in all the gaps uh, through uh, our, our cloud visibility solution. So, so that's really the, the, the premise over here. We want to make sure that customers, as they migrate on their cloud journeys, uh, they don't have gaps. Uh, they, they are they can leverage their training, they can leverage their personnel, they can leverage their tools uh, without having to spend significant amounts of time and resources in changing all of that while the cloud migration journey is going on. 
Yeah, so I think a lot of people think of Gigamon as maybe a network observability vendor, but you actually monitor, like you said, all the way up to the infrastructure stack, right? Containers, virtual machines, cloud infrastructure as well. So that's pretty interesting. Now, one of the fascinating things, you know, in the years and years that I followed Gigamon is you're one of the few vendors that actually managed to sit on that SecOps, NetOps line, right? And you actually had a lot of success selling to both parties. And so, you know, historically, those two buying centers have been distinct. Are you starting to see that ice thaw a little bit in those groups coming together? And then also you mentioned DevOps. And so how does DevOps fit into this world of converging NetOps and SecOps? Yeah, so you, you, you've hit on a pretty important point there, Aziz, which is that uh, traditionally in the past, we've been very successful at talking to both you know, NetOps as well as SecOps, right? And the reason for that actually lies in something you just mentioned, uh, which, is, which is that, yes, we, you know, we work with network data, but, but network data has footprint that can go all the way up the stack, right? You know, using network telemetry, you can identify applications, you can identify application behaviors, you can identify uh, uh, application dependencies, and you can map out all of that stuff. So it's not just network data for network performance, it gets you all the way up to the applications, right? And that is why we've been able to talk very successfully to the network operations teams, as well as the security team, because we give them telemetry that is relevant real time, uh, uh, all the way up, up and down the stack. Now, uh, when it comes to uh, DevOps, again, as I said, DevOps has done, a, by the way, they've done a fantastic job and truly appreciate the, uh, the work that the DevOps teams have done in terms of scripting, automation, working with infrastructure as code. Uh, but their focus has not been around being able to secure the stack up and down, right? It's really running infrastructure. Uh, but I do think we are seeing a little bit of that similar convergence where DevOps is now beginning to talk to uh, security operations and there's a merging of the two uh, and there's a new persona getting established, which is DevSecOps. And, and that's slowly beginning to happen as well. And, and we think that that's a positive, uh, a positive dimension, a positive direction. Uh, and as long as they have access to the right telemetry data stuff, for example, that Gigamon provides to augment the traditional observability data, you can truly bring the two together and bring the best of both worlds, which is the, the world of automation scripting that DevOps brings, but also the holistic view to security top to bottom, uh, inside out and outside in using network intelligence. Uh, and bring the two together. And, and in that way, actually help the security teams move a lot faster in this new world of cloud observability. DevSecOps is sort of an interesting trend that the, we've been, you know, been following for years and years and years, and it seemed like nothing was going on with that, that all of a sudden uh, there's been a lot of momentum towards it, as well as DevNetOps, right, too. So we're seeing network operations start to take that model as well. Now you are the, as I mentioned, you are the CTO. And so I know your main job is to be on cool videos like this. But your secondary job is to, you know, look ahead and look around the corner and see what's next. So what is the future of observability? So uh, I think observability is absolutely here to stay. Uh, as I mentioned, we do need to go beyond the, the, the traditional views of observability, which is focused on logs, metrics, events, and traces, and, and augment and, and fill in the gaps with, with deep observability using network intelligence. But, but I think... Where, where I see the world evolving is the, the paradigms of DevOps expanding significantly into net DevOps, DevSecOps for sure. Uh, but th there's a very interesting example, and I talked about this at one of our keynotes in the past, which is this notion of the first line of defense. Uh, you know, if you go back uh, to the early 1900s, there was, uh, there was an interesting story about Typhoid Mary. Uh, she was a cook, uh, Mary Mallon, and, and every house she would go to, they would develop typhoid. And she never exhibited symptoms uh, because she was actually an asymptomatic carrier of typhoid, right? And she had one um, perhaps uh, uh, interesting but fatal flaw is that even though she was a great cook, she didn't wash her hands. And that was a problem, right? Now, if you think about that, who owns the responsibility for hygiene in that world? Is it the, the, the families uh, of those houses or is it the cook? Right, uh, and the answer is really both. Uh, you, uh, the, the responsibility cannot just be on the users, on the consumers, and the same thing applies to the cloud. Right, we can put the responsibility of security just on the consumers and users and net ops of the cloud. The responsibility also lies with the first line of defense, which is the world of DevOps. They have to learn to wash their hands, and our goal here is to give them the tools so that they can wash their hands, so that they actually while they develop these fantastic recipes in the clouds, they are actually taking the right steps towards good hygiene. All right, well, Shivad, uh, I think you're, uh, you might be uh, Zcast number 50, and I think you're the first person 
to mention typhoid Mary. So congratulations on that. Uh, but that was a good analogy and I appreciate that. Uh, so anyways, uh, thanks for this. That was a fascinating discussion on the world of observability. Obviously we live in this world where all our infrastructure is converging together. And so the ability to have that single source of truth you know, is absolutely critical to IT operations today, you know, including network operations, security operations and things. So uh, on behalf of Zod, I'm Zia Scaravella. I wanna thank you for watching. Don't forget to click to subscribe and I'll see you next time on Zcast.